Anyway, I've got my microphone now, um, so this is audible and stuff. Hello and welcome to an AV Forums short video overview of the Hi-Fi Rose RA280 integrated amplifier. My name is Ed Selly, I'm the Hi-Fi editor for AV Forums. Um, uh, I'm slowly, and I do mean slowly, uh, getting uh, fractionally more comfortable doing these videos. Um, I'm sitting down behind the product, which makes me feel happier if I'm honest. Uh, this is still not my natural way of communicating though. Um, there will be a full written review of the RA280 on the site. Uh, please do have a uh, decent look at that. It uh, expands on various ideas that I'm going to cover at speed in the uh, in the co in this, and um, it's fundamentally the method of communicating which I'm more comfortable with. First of all, Hi-Fi Rose is probably not um, the uh, the equivalent of a, a mass market name at this point. They've not been around for that long um, and they've been in the UK for a couple of years. They are a South Korean company and I think the most important thing to mention about them is that uh, they don't just make hi-fi. They are um, very very active in other fields of software and hardware, most notably point of sale. Why is that notable? Well, point of sale is an area where unconditional stability and reliability aren't simply useful or admirable, they're vital. If your till systems go down, retailers tend to get very unhappy very, very quickly. This does mean that Hi-Fi Rose do tend to know what they're doing when it comes to building and um, then equipping products with software. We've thus far looked at the RS201 all-in-one and the RS250 streamer. They're very distinctive products, full-width screens, Android-based operating system, high emphasis on video integration. Um, but one thing that's absolutely stood out in the time that I've been testing them is that they are, to all intents and purposes, unconditionally stable. Um, nothing I did either deliberately or accidentally during testing caused them to fall over. Uh, there's a level of expertise and general competence in what Hi-Fi Rose is up to that does suggest that they do know what they're doing. The 280, which you see here, isn't the first amplifier that the company's made. First of all, the RS201 is an all-in-one system that's got an amplifier in it. They've then made the RA180, uh, and that's a spectacular looking thing. It's got cogs and dials and all manner of lunacy all over the front of it. It looks like it's sort of escaped from a steampunk convention. Um, that has been reviewed in a very a variety of locations and it's generally speaking been uh, very highly regarded. This is a simplified and crucially less expensive take on the RA180. Um, we'll cover the looks in a little bit uh, but I promise you whatever you think this thing looks like it's toned down over, <laughs> over its big brother. The technology that Hi-Fi Rose has gone with uh, for the amplification is quite interesting. Um, it's a Class D product. Um, that shouldn't be too surprising. Uh, the uh, RS201 is Class D, so is the RA180. But Class D is a bit of a coverall term these days. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of different ways of cracking this particular nut. Um, <clears throat> in the case of the RA280, the pre-amplifier section is uh, entirely Class A. That's hardly unusual. Uh, the voltages involved uh, with a preamp mean that running it Class A doesn't come with quite the same limitations as doing that for a power amplifier stage. Um, it also means that the pre-amplifier is um, incredibly conventional. Uh, at the front here, we have a volume control, which is a conventional pot with a start and a finish point. Um, it's not a rotary encoder. Um, the only oddity about this is that um, if the volume control is at its minimum stop, with the balanced input in particular, it is not silent. If you want it to be silent, you will need to mute it. Um, that's not something I've seen before. I don't necessarily know if it's by accident or by design. Um, nevertheless, mute is entirely silent. You also get tone controls, um, and not any old tone controls either. They have a very, very substantial range of adjustment, um, plus minus 15. Now, as I cover in the copy, um, by the time you take them to either of their extremes, be it the bass or the treble control, they sound a bit weird. But, absolutely crucially, when you're adjusting them within the remit of 
um, plus minus six, like a more conventional tone control fitted to products that still have them. Uh, they're extremely even and, and, and you know, relatively balanced in how they operate. Um, they, they generally just affect the point of frequency that they've been asked to do and it, it's very effective. You could legitimately use them to just do a final tweak for performance of the amplifier in room. Um, this is then connected to two Class D modules, 250 watts into 8 ohms. Power into other impedances is not specified, but I can assure you that under test this thing has been volcanic into pretty much everything I've connected it to. I don't believe there's a speaker anywhere similar in pricing terms that it's going to present a, any form of a challenge to how the 280 operates. That's not the interesting bit. Class D amplifiers are accused of having something called dead time. Um, it's the point where they switch between on and off, and there's a pause during that. Now, being candid for a moment, uh, most of the people who are most het up about this as a concept, by an extraordinary coincidence, don't make Class D amplifiers. I think that this is cogging for the 21st century, cogging being something that is accused of the direct drive turntables where they move between uh, the motor poles. Um, Nevertheless, Hi-Fi Rose hasn't taken this lying down. They have fitted those two amplifier modules with gallium nitride FETs, field effect transistors. Um, these have an exceptionally fast response time, and that is intended to try and reduce the notional dead time between these switched points. Um, as to whether it's making any night and day difference, we'll cover sound quality in a bit. Um, I suspect that this is more covering off people being concerned about it in the dealer more than anything else. But nevertheless, it shows an interesting um, determination to you know, solve issues as they perceive them to be. The power supply is switch mode. Um, that uses silicon nitride FETs um, and can deliver extremely high peak current uh, extremely quickly. Um, just to reiterate what I've been saying just now, I haven't in any way scratched the surface of just how much grunt this thing has and I'd be incredibly surprised if anyone who ends up buying one really and routinely starts troubling the upper echelons of the volume control. Um, there's also a pair of VU meters and who doesn't like a pair of VU meters? Um, I have to be honest, I really like these ones. Um, they're not overly large, uh, they're not particularly distracting. Uh, you can turn the illumination for them off, you can't actually turn them off. Interestingly, you can turn the tone controls off, but that also turns their illumination off, and that looks asymmetric, and I'm willing to bet that most people don't bother in the end because it looks asymmetric. Nevertheless, the VU meters uh, give you a reasonable handle on what the amplifier is up to. Um, because it is so powerful and because the inputs uh, have a reasonable scope before any form of overload, uh, they actually do like, move in a, in a pleasing way rather than staying welded to their end stops or not moving at all. Um, it's a matter of personal taste, but who doesn't like a VU meter? I think it looks fantastic, and I, I, I think that it's a gamble that Hi-Fi Rose isn't, isn't betting the house on. I think enough people will be quite keen on it. There is no um, remote input selection. Input selection is exclusively on this large controller at the end. Now, however satisfying the thunk it's making in the video and however good it looks in the pictures, I promise you it feels better. Um, I've tested items that cost a lot more than this that don't have controls that are as well judged as tactile and as fundamentally pleasant to use. Something that you do not get on the 280 is any form of headphone socket. Uh, this down here is not a headphone socket, it is the IR remote window. Um, there's no headphone socket and more importantly, we're gonna do the back panel in just a bit, but there's no immediately straightforward way of connecting a headphone amplifier to this product. So if you are a headphone user, you're going to have to find a way of doing that without um, troubling the unit itself. I'm going to now turn this round, and I'm not going to turn it around whilst the camera's rolling because that's what silly people do. So I'll be right back with it pointing in the other direction. Bear with. The most interesting thing about what you see here is what you don't see here. The RA280 has no digital inputs of any kind. There's not a Bluetooth receiver lurking either or any other surreptitious form of digital to be found anywhere on this amplifier. 
they've taken the pretty logical view that if you have one of their streamers or indeed most modern digital sources you will have all of the digital inputs you could possibly want and more and they have therefore hi-fi rose has decided that the ra280 is an exclusively analog performer what you get, IEC main socket, as I say, it's a switch mode power supply. Uh, it's also universal voltage, so it'll work on anything between 100 and 240 volts. I haven't tried that here, but um, that's what the back of it says anyway. Um, you'll note, if you're looking closely, that there is a separate chassis ground and a phono stage ground. I've not required that on this product, and very rarely require it on any product that I test, but it does show a pleasing attention to detail, which um, I think augurs well for all of the other parts of the amplifier. Speaker terminals, um, very, very solid. Uh, single set only, so you can't buy wire, if any of you still are actually buy wiring. Um, feels very, very well assembled. Um, I do like this spacing as well. It's very easy to get things connected to. Single um, XLR input, moving magnet phono stage, and then three line inputs. As noted, the only output beyond the speaker terminals on this amplifier is a single subwoofer out, for which as best as I can work out, there is no crossover. You'll need to do external crossover for that as well. So if you're looking to attach power amplifiers or other devices, this is not the product for you. But again, if you're looking for something which is a pre-amplifier, that's all of Hi-Fi Rose's streamers. I, I admire the fact that they're not essentially doubling down on, on features. You, you buy the products that you need and you, you don't have to have bits that you don't need. Right then, sonically, uh, it's this amplifier is an absolute demonstration of um, the sheer breadth of how Class D devices sound in 2024, in the same way that there's a massive sort of disparity in how Class AB devices and Class A devices sound in 2024. There's no one size or one sound fits all caveat to how these products perform. As I've said, I don't listen to this and think oh god that's gallium nitrides and neither am i aware of a truly radically different performance suggesting that dead time has been you know heroically dealt with and consigned to the dustbin of history but that's because i didn't listen to class d products prior to this one telling it going god that dead time is absolutely intolerable so your mileage may vary. It might be something like um, colour wheel and rainbow effect with uh, certain projectors and you either hear it or you don't. Um, I don't, and you can accuse me of being cloth-eared for that, but I have to be honest, it's not been an issue. Nevertheless, I do like how this amplifier sounds. Uh, there have been points where more than anything else, it sounds like a relatively grunty valve amplifier. There is a smoothness, a refinement, and an overall tonal realism that I have found to be extremely compelling. Um, it is detailed without being uh, fatiguing. Um, it seems to handle uh, less than perfect recordings extremely well, but when you do give it something decent, it responds extremely positively. Um, the time I've spent with it has been tremendously enjoyable. As I've noted, uh, none of the speakers that I've connected, I've been running it with Neat's various focals, uh, not just the ones that have appeared in the video segments, the larger Aria X, but also the more demanding Canter number no. one, which doesn't necessarily need as much power, but does have sp certain specific demands. Neither of them have pre presented a challenge to how this amplifier works. There's and actually a reasonably entertaining sort of sense of get up and go. You can buy more ballistic sounding amplifiers than this one at the price point, Riga, name, exposure, etc. They're all queuing up to sell you something with a bit more get up and go, but it's unlikely that you're going to sit and listen to the Hi-Fi Rose and go, oh, that sounded a bit sluggish because it really, really doesn't. The general sense is of a truly accomplished all-rounder. Um, it should pair up with a variety of sources and speakers and strut its stuff in all of them. Obviously, uh, there wasn't a Hi-Fi Rose streamer supplied for testing, um, but based on the performance of those, I think the balance of two Hi-Fi Rose units together would be extremely positive. I did a lot of testing, running it with an Astell and Kern portable player um, out of its balanced output into the XLR connections. Uh, the review for that will be on the site as well. 
I thought that was an absolutely sensational pairing. I also think that the phono stage is a genuinely, genuinely lovely thing. Um, it's not a convenience feature. Um, yes, it's moving magnet only. Um, quite a few people at this price point might be looking for moving coil, but we've also established that there's um, plenty of decent um, high-end moving magnets um, in the current climate. You could build a system where you are relying on the RA280 to do your uh, vinyl needs, and I suspect you'd be more than delighted with how it sounds. Uh, very, very quiet, um, reasonable gain in the phono stage itself, and it doesn't really matter if there's any limitations in gain when you're bolted to an amplifier which has got as much grunt as this one does. Um, at no stage have I really found myself thinking, oh, that's objectively wrong, or that's subjectively wrong. It is extremely compelling. I wasn't necessarily sure what I was going to expect get. get. It's the first Hi-Fi Rose amplifier I've tested, bar the, you know, the one in the all-in-one, which is a slightly different kettle of fish. Um, this is not uh, a product which has been done as a sort of niche or novelty item. Uh, it might look a bit odd, but actually I don't think it looks bad at all and I would also say uh, that the more time you spend with it the more the various sort of oddities of it make sense um, but no this is a legitimate com competitor to other devices at £3,000. Would I buy one? That's a tough call there's no shortage of competition as I've just said um, but nevertheless I found myself liking this amplifier an awful lot more than I thought I would. Um, it's uh, a very balanced all-rounder. Um, connectivity is decent enough for what uh, it needs to be on the understanding that you've split requirements between digital source and amplifier. Uh, I mean, if you haven't, then this is almost certainly not going to be for you. On the understanding that you have, um, there's an enormous amount to like here, and the review on the site will reflect the fact that um, I think that this is one of the best offerings um, at £3,000. Uh, and it's something that I would urge you to check out because it's really very, very good indeed. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, um, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, hopefully it sounds like less and less of a threat each time I do this, but there will be more of them. Um, they are going to continue partnering uh, written material on the site. Uh, I'm always interested in feedback as to what we should be looking at. Um, but uh, otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.